Hello SGD, first of all I'd like to thank Matto, he sent me the link to this I wouldn't, because it's titled and the description's in Japanese, I would never have found it. So it's about Japanese stonemasonry and a restoration uh, project that goes on in one of these giant walls. We'll see a few examples here, but it, uh, beautiful stonework and what we're going to see is like perfectly fitted stone. So there's a, uh, like here's a more of a st standard drywall technique. So you have those little filler stones um, in between. But again, in that final restoration, we'll see it's, there's all these different types of really beautiful, very high precision, as they say, um, stonework. If these type of walls were found in any other, in a, this would be uh, cyclopean, unexplainable, uh, lost high technology um, type of examples. And the type of tools that they found, and just to remember, to, Power tools have now come in and they've just made it easier and faster to do. They're still working exactly the same. Grinding or percussion, basically banging or scraping and scratching. So no special on these walls on the corners, so this is away from the corner, but the corners tend to be much nicer because they need to be to hold the whole thing together. And so uh, in the reconstruction that we'll see, we'll see some beautiful, uh, really be perfect fitting types of stones. And these are some examples of uh, yeah what we'll find um, in Japan there as well. And the method that they do it is essentially with dry stone method. So whether it's uh, still like the, the Great Pyramid, for instance, really nice, well fitted stones on the outside. Go one layer back, not so much. Go one layer back, and then sort of uh, infill. So you might well, if I was to tell you these were Peru and Inca, in, you know, precision that type of stuff. Most people, oh yeah, that must be. Uh, especially look there at the corners. He's going to—they're going to do that same level of work in this reconstruction, while the main part of a wall is going to be uh, more your standard drywall uh, technique. So, just some of the examples of what they're going to do. And now, here's the site itself. So, there's a wall. You can see the scaffold, but they need to repair, restore this wall. And there she is. There. And one of the first things they're going to do is because I did a video on the Parthenon restoration where they did stone fitting like leagues better than any anything that's ever been done because they'll um, but by using ancient methods and this is what these guys are going to do. They're not a historical recreation society, so they're going to use modern tools along the way. Um, but again, firstly, while, while you're watching the video, they're numbering and taking records of each stone because they want to preserve and reuse every piece of stone that they can and a minimum amount of new stones added to the project. Okay, so yeah, um, they're going to be building basically from street uh, lifting up. So you will see they, uh, they're going to use cranes with long boomer, you know, like those standard sort of, you know, drive up type of cranes but that's because they're building so for instance there the cranes out on the street and it's going to be lifting up but you would come from behind so you wouldn't need these giant cranes to lift it up again not a historical recreation society um, but the old methods for the most part work beautifully deconstruction of the wall you can see what how the wall is behind and how it is there in front this is a standard that you'll see across the you know megalithic ancient world um, and here's just a show and animation of the style. So yeah, again, stones fitted nicely, corners touching on the outside. They taper out and so there's gaps and in those gaps they insert other stones to keep them apart. And then there is just fill behind that. Uh, standard dry stone wall technique. Now for instance, the Great Pyramid or Peru and those walls. Again, same thing, beautiful on the outside. And then the same methods used behind and it's just how well how much effort do you put into fitting these stones perfectly together? Now, for instance, this is the main part of a wall. We will see, you know, perfectly fitted stones in other parts, but they're showing the deconstruction um, process as well. So, Incan walls are of varying quality. Uh, the vast majority of them, which defines the Inca, was you know more in this type of fashion. But then people will focus on those the most perfect ones of them but we'll see in here they're going to do that type of work as well traditional masons traditional techniques we saw them levering these stones so they are going to be using cranes and stuff again along the way but not necessary to the project um for instance you could you would without a giant crane down on street level i would just roll it out roll it down the side and take it off um if you know i didn't have access to this technology they're going to load it onto a truck place it in the yard 
keeping records of each number, uh, numbering the stones so they know exactly where the other one goes back and again to use the minimum amount of new stone. Um, I'll link that in the description, the Parthenon reconstruction again where they do just way way better than any other stone fitting because they're, they're refitting broken stones together. Here's, and I'll link this up, okay, those walls have got to be curved so to keep them nice and to stop them bowing out, collapsing, going at different angles they need to you know, get the, the nice curve and, and keep that going. How do they do it? Really simply. Simple, so just like plumb lines, really simple methods work. They make these frames that we'll see in a moment and then they use they've got their measurements they have these little planks of wood and then they're going to move those and, and use that curve and use that you know a frame it could, could be made out of bamboo or whatever you know you don't need steel and well and then just wooden planks and it's going to keep that curve this is exactly the same method that even they still use now to make giant sculptures and statues I'll link that video in the description so again this uh, how did they make the giant statues well they just it's essentially this um, type of method and uh, I'll link that video in the description as well. Here we are at the quarry. I'm almost certain that this must be granite uh, and they assume they're going to replace old stone with the same type. Modern tool to drill the holes. Again, I've done the demos. You don't need modern tools to do it. Um, but then they're resorting to sort of the most basic techniques as well. No laser cutting or anything like that. Uh, it's you know, cheaper and just works just as well. You drill those holes and not even feather and wedge, just just a wedge to split these stones. And just the old fella on the hammer breaking a giant stone. I've, I've shown other examples, people you know, doing this with absolutely colossal stones, just a few people. And notice how flat the stone is. You do have those little holes, half holes left on either side, but that just means you just have to take down a centimeter of stone to grind it down to flat. Modern quarry, they're going to use excavators, modern cranes, but again in other videos I've shown you, you, you don't need those, they're just a modern convenience, not a necessity in the project. Just another example of some other Japanese um, places, and again if you saw these stone walls presented in a Brian Foster video, this would be unexplained, megalithic aspect, cyclopean, how did that, uh, must be, you know, Atlantean lost high technology. Uh, so again, if you didn't see, no, it was Japan. Even some places, people show these Japanese walls, and oh, this is amazing. I like to include this one because this shows again a different style. This is more of a herringbone pattern. Uh, now, if they had polished it down, it would have a much different look. But they've left that look on the outside. So, you know, different taste. Now, I think that might be the top of a giant wall on the outside, or just a smaller uh, wall. But again, we'll see in a look. So again, I've literally seen this exact type of wall described as you know lost mystery history um, type of things. This is just skilled stone working. Um, so back to the site, they're um, even now they're breaking it down or they're putting it back together at this point. Oh, this is a cool bit because they're gonna. So again, ancients didn't have plastic. We could do this template with um, you know with cloth with a like you know sort of choose your material that you really want to do it with and very simple techniques work really well they measure the stone it's big enough they take that template and uh, what do they do copy it draw it on the outside and there's a nice little part here because I've, I've shown those feather and wedge and splitting techniques but this is a good example because it's uh, how to not just split stone right down the middle as people well you can only do that I've had people insist to me but uh, here's a really cool example because they also use a type of uh, wedge tool that I haven't really noticed before so notice he puts the wet there's a wedge there at the end then he inserts the rod in the middle and then he inserts that down there so the wedge is happening not at the top of a hole but way down at the bottom of a hole and that's going to create the not the cracks on the surface but internal cracks and that's how he's going to get that shape and split that uh, shape out so he's you know experience these people know what they're doing learn, you know look to the people who you know work with stone not people who point at stones I would I would say and this is one stone that's almost going to be perfect polygonal fit but this is not the best one but just a an example of uh, the methods and the tools that they're using uh, they're going to bring the stone in see fits reasonably well they're going to make it a little bit better and again they're restoring the walls that that part the okay, needs it's going to take off a little bit from the side, so again, just a split wedge. Um, 
break it off. Granite breaks really, if you know what you're doing, all stones actually break really easily. And notice that it's just fitting on the outside. So just like with those big stones in uh, Peru and stuff, it's only really the outside that tends to be fitted. When you see the wall from behind, uh, it's back filled with rubble and that type of stuff. So like that animation we saw earlier. Beautiful on the surface. It's still beautiful behind, but you know, um, what's behind is, you know, is not going to be seen, so you don't need to make it that. Uh, even with steel tools, and this is probably carbide tip, work is slow. So again, this all, old copper chisel stone pounders, it's a, it's a nonsense argument because, oh, well, it takes too... Firstly, you couldn't do it, then you show people doing it. Well, it takes too long. Just as we saw then, people working, again, we've even... Stone working is, is a patient craft it's a you know be like saying to a watchmaker oh, it takes too long for you to hand make a watch and they look at you funny and rightly so some places really nice fit and other places they're jamming um you know filler in standard dry stone um technique further on will seem really really nice fit especially on the corners uh, where they do that you know perfect precision you can't get a piece of paper and say oh you can get a you know piece of paper in there well we'll see other parts where they don't so again they're restoring this particular wall as it was including the non-perfect parts as well as the good ones rubble backfill standard ancient you know it's, it's uh, no one makes deep super precision super well fit walls why would you do it for um, again filling it in and after they're filled in they're going to have that layer of cobbles little you know boulders behind and then an urban layer uh, behind that so where are we going now all right so now the wall starting to come uh, back together if you would begin to strip those off and place these in you know mycenae and grease or something oh oh my god look at that notice those wooden planks it's getting simple techniques work beautifully i'll put links in the description to those videos as well so um you know, like they could have just filled it in with con they could have made the whole wall of concrete and used a template on the outside like a um, you know, to, to copy. Okay, now we get to the really nice part of the wall where these stones are fitted beautifully on the outside. And again, it's small crew. This is not a giant team of workers like, you know, piling over all over the place. It's a, a small skilled crew. And there we start to see these uh, one of the parts of the wall. It's even nicer than that in a moment, but gonna get a feel of, again, even with modern tools, which are not much better actually than you know stone pounder. Like if I was to use a stone pounder or, or an angular dolerite pounder, I'm not getting much advantage over steel. So when again, that's just one of those um, lost ancient high tech things. Is they're just so resistant to you know actually have any interest in stone. Um, it's you've got to preserve the narrative, even when you, and people get angry at you for actually showing. There's a, like uh, now you start to see the really nicely well fitted stones. I don't know exactly what's going on with these plugs. Um, while they're putting them um, in the drill holes might be like to stop uh, water or, or ice getting I'd probably not maybe just a marker like you know oh probably it was a mason's mark like if I ever pull it apart in the future you know Yoshi or whatever it is you know you can say back in 2002 I did this I uh, think of a Menkara pyramid rough um, out and then they smooth it down with uh, beautiful wall outside rough fill on the inside ancient and modern universal technique now we come to like again uh, comparison and notice the bend in the wall and the and the corner pieces i think that's the next part now this i've shortened this video down from 48 minutes just to, to the main highlight so again corner pieces much nicer than the rest of a wall and still like for instance doorways you'll see in old stone houses lovely doorways lovely corners and not so much on the inside um, using clamps, so of Greece, other places, uh, Peru, ancient Egypt. This was a, um, using clamps to get in there. Uh, they they use computer computer modeling, I think, and, and use the three D print to get in there uh, to do this. But again, not necessary because we see the guy who's going to actually be putting these together. You know, he was born and you know trained and worked uh, before you know computing, and that was a thing. Old school. Uh, craftsmen, these old crafts are dying out um, sadly is uh, a nice tool that's like a, I forget the name of this particular so it's like a it's a chisel on the end of a hammer um, basically and he's attacking the corners 
and he can get will be taken off big um, pieces. Yeah, you see how you go. If you know how to work the stone, you, know, you can you know what you're doing. Bigger crane again, not um, uh, ancient cranes were, were were fine, and you don't even need a crane. There are other ways to move and manipulate blocks. We just tend to think in lifting up and 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 putting things down. In other videos I've showed this. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, to get those slings out, that's probably why those little planks are in there, but now we've got to make the stone fit and work well, and again, stone's hard, even with carbide tools, and it's just a slow process. Really nice fit at the corners, you might have missed that, and then it sort of doesn't need to be, doesn't need to be perfectly fit at the, ba uh, at the back, because you can use spacings, um, fill it up with bits and pieces. There on the corner, again, you know, levers wedges uh you know rope pulleys and stuff you can manipulate these stones especially those final touches when you get it precise put in a little stone you know get the right stone insert it and now we start to see those really nice corner blocks with the nice uh, uh making of the mark of where it's uh nicely dressed corners and edges must be you know mysterious the engineers of you know left air maker uh, again small crew I mean, it's not the local feudal lord who can throw you know laborers and put laborers to their death there's also a tradition that they would actually especially in japan they would sacrifice people and put a person in the wall as well of i was in the golden bow uh, but other, there are other references to it that will you know hopefully they don't do that uh, these days there's you know some of the nicer buildings and that's pretty much it uh, links in the description SGD you know, cred to the stonemasons and the people who still do this ancient techniques rock